What's up, toy fans? Welcome to uh, what is undoubtedly going to be a, a very temporary setup. Um, while I'm currently too lazy to just walk outside to my backyard and, of course, film anything on my own actual review setup. This is uh, my home. This is inside my room. This is my desktop. This is where the magic happens. So welcome, first of all, to my humble abode. And today we are going to be taking a look at the Pacific Rim Uprising Robot Spirits from Bandai Japan. Uh, and Tamashi Nations. This is, of course, the first Robot Spirits toy that I've ever reviewed. And, of course, the first uh, Pacific Rim Uprising figure I've ever reviewed. But I have been plenty familiar with the Robot Spirits line, and, of course, a lot of the gun dumb that they do produce in their line. And I'm sure many of you have seen a lot of Robot Spirits action figures at conventions and various other places with their iconic red and white packaging, but now for the case of Pacific Rim Uprising, which I think is one of the first mass American releases of a Robot Spirits figure, we have something a lot more streamlined. Gone are the giant red and white stripes down the side of the packaging that says Robot Spirits. Of course, we now have a much more, a much more subtle, simple Robot Spirits logo right up there at the top, and it is a standard window box packaging. You have Gypsy Avenger right there, who's uh, very, very overplayed. In fact, this artwork does overshadow the actual figure inside the box uh, quite a bit. Uh, you do have the Gypsy Avenger logo right there on the side. You have a nice image of Gypsy Avenger, of course, at the bottom. Side Jaeger, or whatever that means. And I should also mention that I have not seen Pacific Rim Uprising yet. Uh, and on the back of the packaging, you do have Gypsy Avenger doing a fierce pose, or, or multiple fierce poses. And, of course, legal information on the back, distributed by Bluefin, you know, all that fun stuff. When you do finally get around to opening up the packaging, you know, the side right there. You slide the figure outside the box, and you do have this clamshell packaging. We're going to put this to the side for now. You do have this clamshell packaging, and it's almost nearly impossible to see everything that's in the figure. Uh, so we're going to have to take this top part off. Alright. And I do think that's a lot better. So you get the actual figure itself proper. You have two sets of hands. You have a set of kind of open, almost Iron Man-like hands, and you have a set of fisted hands right there. We'll take a closer look at those hands a little bit later. You also have, of course... I don't know what it's called because I haven't seen the movie. You have his removable uh, forearm and his blaster thingy right there, uh, which is nicely detailed. And you have his sword, his little sword whip thing right there. Uh, you do also get two parts on the top. These are not, in fact, weapons, but they do attach to the back of Gypsy Avenger just like this. And of course, now that leaves us with the figure. I apologize if you hear the creaking of my seat. It's probably pretty annoying. Uh, the figure it's oh oh, the figure itself is um, pretty sparse when it comes to a lot of paint applications. You have really just a few of them, and then a lot of the rest of it is just molded uh, metallic plastic, or it's a very very loose PVC style plastic. Almost rubbery at some points, especially the legs and the thighs. Oh, those are particularly rubbery. Uh, but you do have nice silver paint right here, right under his uh, breastial areas. You do have a nice gold paint right here for his visor, which uh, does in fact look quite good. His abdomen is of course molded plastic, and you do have uh, basically molded plastic throughout, uh, with the addition of some tampographic detail sort of right here. And you do have a nice little uh, Gypsy Avenger logo right there at the top. Pretty simple in terms of detail, and then you can see those two added parts that we added. They sort of just add some nice shoulder protectors. Uh, not a lot too crazy going on here. Uh, the main reason you're actually buying this figure is for its articulation, and it absolutely <laughs> does not disappoint in that area. So you're going to start with your head. Your head's on two joints. It can move forward and back. Uh, it's on a ball joint as well up there. Uh, it also does have a waist ab crunch right there, but there is no waist swivel. Uh, if you do need that, you're going to get that detail with that ab crunch where it can rotate and you can get some nice dynamic poses. Uh, these shoulder pads are on ball, ball, uh, barbell ball joints. Uh, these can move up and down, they can rotate, they can get out of the way for all of the uh, arm poses that you may need. Uh, and they do pop up very easily. Now something with the uh, 
ball joints that are on this figure is that they're designed in a way uh, they're the type of ball joints that are designed to eject the part once any sort of pressure is applied so when you're changing the hands or when you're messing with the shoulder pads or the feet particularly uh, you're going to have a lot of ejected parts that just kind of shoot out um, just like that and that is very much so done purposely of course for the uh, sake of the toy you know you don't want to risk breaking it so it's it's easier to just have a ball joint pop off that you can replace just in a couple of seconds later than it is to actually have a toy break then you've got a whole set of new issues uh, let's see what else does this toy have all right you do have a upper uh, bicep swivel you have a double jointed arm the hands are on ball joints again they're very loose ball joints that pop off very easily and pop back on very easily again I mentioned the waist swivel uh, the legs themselves are designed very much so like uh, SH figure arts where they're on sort of this rocking pivoting joint uh, which are attached to ball bear, ball, more barbell ball joints, uh, and the legs can sort of splay outwards like this in order to get a nice high kick. And of course, when you're doing, when you're splaying the the legs left and right, kind of rocking them left and forth, you can uh, that'll allow you to be able to do the, of course, iconic Iron Man pose, uh, which is not something that most figures are able to do simply, but this one does it without uh, any sort of issues. Uh, you can do it just quickly. Just Iron Man pose. Get her to look up. You have a ball joint at the knee. Or, you know, you have a double joint at the knee. Again, it's another one of those double joints where if you do play with it a little bit, you may be able to get a little tiny bit more motion. Uh, and, of course, you have a final barbell. Barbell ball joint right there at the foot. And this just pegs right down there. Uh, and, again, it does pop off quite easily. So, you do need to be careful when you're playing with it. You don't want to lose any points. Any points. You don't want to lose any pieces. Uh, but in terms of articulation, there's absolutely no shortage. You are getting a ton with this toy, uh, and you will not be disappointed, and that is sort of seen throughout the entire line. Uh, none of these figures disappoint when it comes to articulation. It is uh, just truly, it's really, really wonderful. Uh, and for just a final quick look at the accessories, again, you do get the sort of splayed, almost Iron Man repulsor hands. This, of course, will allow you to do that uh, iconic pose from the movie. The iconic fist pose punch pose from Pacific Rim 1, I should say. Uh, let's figure out what that is. Uh, and it would not be a Pacific Rim action figure if you could not get it to do. Obviously, that's a very, very ter <laughs> terrible, terrible representation of the pose in the movie, but uh, you, know, you can get it to do that when you are, of course, fiddling with it for a bit more. Uh, and that's a really nice option to have. You again also have the sword detail, and to replace that, you simply just remove the forearm, pull it off like that. This one will literally just slide in its place, uh, and it does fit on either forearm, which is really nice. Just like that. Uh, and you can pop the new hand just right there. Uh, and of course, the poses you get with this, you can do quite a few of them. Uh, there are really no limitations, which is really just great. I know I'm kind of going on, I'm just trying to show these accessories. Uh, but I really enjoy these toys. Uh, and finally, you have this thing. So if you want to double arm this guy up, you're more than welcome to. And then this just slides on. Somehow. And when you just want to doubly arm him up, of course you can do that. You can have him use his uh, repulsor like blaster spinny. Oh no, this is the gravity. This is like the gravity grabber thingy. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, there's really not much else to say. Um, now Gypsy Avenger is a little bit cheaper than the rest of the figures. Uh, it only has a price point of $19.99, whereas the rest of the line you're going to get that $29 price point. Um, it's really worth at least getting Gypsy Avenger if you're not even sure about the line. Because at $29.95, $29.99, uh, I do believe the other figures are worth it. So it's just kind of a bonus that you get to save $10. But I think, you know, the reason why they did that is obvious. 
uh, and worth it if you are able to get this figure. Uh, so do so. Anyway, that does it for this review. Again, I highly recommend picking up this figure just because of the articulation alone. Uh, you are essentially getting a SH figure art light uh, for $19.99, so that makes it nice and you do get a crap ton of posability, uh, which is great for robot battles. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.